You know, I'd like to take a moment right at the beginning of the show to thank all the people who have stopped playing the alpha. Since the game has depopulated just a little bit, it has been running fantastic. It has been running smooth and relatively error-free. Well, relatively. Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and today we're going to go out on a bit of an excursion and talk about space bikes. Now, space bikes have been around for a little while now. They originally became flyable in 3.0, though going all the way back to 2016 when we first saw the Dragonfly, they've been a very popular addition to the Star Citizen universe. Now, since 3.0 and their delivery, you know, they have been troubled to say the least they've had they've had some difficulties um the nox is almost unplayable in its current state the dragonfly is a little bit better i mean it does obviously have some issues but it does fairly well it tends to ride a little bit higher off the ground and i think that that's kind of leaning towards it being more successful than the Nox currently. But space bikes in general, I think, have been one of CIG's smarter moves. I think that this is probably one of the better vehicles that has been brought into the Star Citizen universe. And though they are having difficulties now, I mean, we found out during Ask the Devs yesterday that yes, they are working on, they are aware of the issues, and they are looking into improving them. But, you know, when I talk about stuff like the cockpit of the Cutlass, and I say, okay, here's a problem, blah, blah, blah. But when I look at something like the Dragonfly, it's actually, it's a different thing. It's a different kind of problem because it's a bug. Functionally, when you look at a Dragonfly from its basic level, from just sitting in it, moving it around, you can look at it and say, once they get all this physics worked out, once they get the flight and the IFCS all ironed out on this vehicle, it's going to be just fine. It's in fact probably going to be one of the more useful space bikes out there, mainly because of its ability to also carry cargo plus a passenger. Now that's not to say that the X1 or the Nox I consider to be ultimately inferior to the Dragonfly, but you know me, I'm a bit of a pragmatist. And so I kind of drift more towards the Dragonfly because it seems to be a much more omni-useful type vehicle. It has, you know, different capabilities that the others just don't have. And being able to carry cargo or a passenger is a big thing that I feel could factor in in the future. Now, space bikes in general... When, you know, lately we've been talking about having to go to mission sites and mission locations, but there's a lot of people out there. You know, we talk about multi-crew ships and all that, but there's a lot of people out there who will probably admit to, them, to themselves and to others readily that they're probably going to spend most of their time going solo. They'll touch base with friends here and there, they'll get things done, but generally they tend to want to go out on their own and do things on their own schedule. And it's very hard to mesh up your schedule and another person's schedule because oftentimes when we do have the free time to play our games, sometimes our friends aren't available or they're away or they're at work or they're here, there, or anywhere else. And so a lot of us have kind of adapted to, even in an MMO, a lot of us play that kind of solo player lifestyle. Now, as many of us play the game right now, we play the game for convenience. We get a mission, there's the mission location. We go, we land right there on the spot. We go in, we pick up the package, we, you know, we check for whatever, we find whatever we're supposed to be looking for. And we go, we load it back onto our ship, and we just fly away from that location. But remember that that is not always going to be the case, and that may not always be the smartest move. Certainly right now, it's a bit of a questionable move, but we're very much you know, accustomed to our conveniences right now. But once 
things become a little bit more dire once everything counts once the chips are on, once the chips are down and you could lose your life or you could lose hours of gameplay off of such an obvious mistake you're gonna have to start thinking about possibly not landing directly at your mission site but rather landing somewhere outside of normal sensor range hiding your ship and then proceeding via ground vehicle to that location. You might remember the movie Phantom Menace and when Darth Maul arrives on Tatooine, he goes, he lands his ship at a certain location out away from everything else. Then he proceeds to get on a speeder and go out and start scouting around. Now this is kind of why when people sit there and they say things like, hey, you know, what do you think are the best starter ships in the game? You know, what, what I'm thinking about getting into Star Citizen, what ship should I get? Well, honestly, if you, if you, if you think you're going to be doing hacking or a lot of electronic warfare stuff, obviously the Herald is fantastic. But for a general player starting the game, my biggest recommends are always Cutlass Freelancer. Cutlass and Freelancer are, in my mind, because of the fact that they can carry a space bike, because they can also carry cargo, because they're competent in combat, and because they are just generally good ships, and at a price point that compared to other ships, which, you know, I guess is debatable, their value versus price, I think that they are two of the most excellently valued ships in the game, possibly even undervalued. You may also run into missions where you're denied access to a certain area. Perhaps there's an AA defense, some type of storm, whatever. You can't fly directly there. You have to land, hop on something like a space bike, and then truck the rest of the distance in to get that mission complete. And so when people look at fighters and they say, oh, you know, I, I'm thinking about just getting the 300. I'm just thinking about getting, you know, whatever, a Hornet, a Buccaneer. And that's just, that's the only ship for me and I'm good. I always tend to think of ships, especially in that situation where you're kind of saying, well, I'm only going to go with one ship. Get a ship that can carry a space bike because you never know really what circumstances you're going to end up in. You never know if you're going to have to travel when you get to a planet and being able to truck something like this around is going to add to the convenience. You don't just think of a ship as a way to move your character around in the literal sense, but think of it in the metaphorical sense too, as a vehicle to propel your character's career forward. And really at the low end, the Cutlass and the Freelancer are the best. They simply are the best because they can carry space bikes and space bikes increase your capabilities they increase your convenience they give you options that you never had before when i hear about people going on they're saying well i don't know what i'm going to get so i'm just going to get a super hornet and i'm like oh man that is such a missed opportunity when someone goes out and buys a super hornet or a hurricane and that's my one and only ship and blah 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 I always kind of look at that and I'm thinking man that's a cutlass and a space bike that's a freelancer and a space bike what are you doing if I only had like a very base level Aurora MR game package if that's all I ever had first two big things on my to-do list earn a cutlass earn a space bike those would be the first two things that I would do. Get there and then use that to propel yourself forward. Give, use those to give yourself options. You know, obviously space bikes do have problems right now. They have big problems. And there's a lot of videos that you can go out and see on YouTube that just show the myriad of difficulties that space bikes face right now. And the physics engine is not there and it's probably going to take a while for them to dial it in. But these things, like any of the space bikes, because you, maybe you just don't want to carry cargo, maybe you like the X1 recon version, maybe you like the Nox, maybe that's more your style. But 
any one of those is going to give you a lot more options on how you dissect a situation tactically because it means you can hide your ship some distance away and then proceed in on the ground and space bikes are far more stealthy than people appreciate so you're going to be a lot harder to find on your way into the objective. So when people kind of ask me, you know, like, oh, why don't you talk about the space bike issues? Why don't you talk about the space bike problems? The space bikes, the bugs that they have, the physics engine issues that they have, the flight and, you know, the flight model issues that they have, these are to be expected. You know, this is like, oh, well, it's alpha. These things happen. And this is stuff that CIG is going to work out. These are things that CIG is obviously going to fix. It looks good kind of bad right now but obviously they are they've got things in hand and they are looking at it actively right now and working to resolve these issues so i don't really see this as a problem that's worthy of too much talk or all that much talk at all but in terms of utility in terms of functionality the possibilities that space bikes open up is incredible like I think that in terms of overall functionality, you know, physics engine issues notwithstanding, these are probably some of the least problematic vehicles in the Star Citizen universe. In fact, one of the features that I would argue for since, you know, CIG is looking at space bikes right now, certainly they're talking about it and they're trying to iron out the bugs with them. One of the features that I would look for right now that I, I would really like to see from CIG is the ability to spawn our space bikes directly onto our vehicles that can handle them. Like take over one of the panels in the Caterpillar or the Cutlass or a Freelancer, whatever, and just make that a mini spawn location where you can spawn up your space bikes. So when you go and do a mission, you don't have to land directly on the site. Maybe you can land 50 or 40 kilometers away someplace where no one's going to see you and then you can <laughs> and then you can basically spawn your space bike there of course breaking immersion a little bit but eventually in the future you should be able to have it preloaded there and then go out and do the mission in a in a much more in a much smarter way in a much more careful way that kind of reflects the universe that Star Citizen is intended to be and much less the sort of let's just do things the quick and easy way because we don't know when the game is going to crash way that we're doing things now. So that's just about my opinion on the current state of space bikes and uh, my expectations for the future. Now I know there's a lot of debate as to how high they should be flying up in the sky. Um, I feel that two meters off the ground is, is a fair distance that allows for the bike to correct for terrain and give it enough of a buffer zone to uh, kind of ride out all the rough patches on the ground. But yeah, about two meters or in American that would be, what, about six and a half feet or two Tom Cruises. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the show and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.